We're back at 742. You probably know your pillows and bed sheets have dust mites on them, but are you aware you're sleeping on a miniature ecosystem? A recent study out of England suggests that pillows harbor dangerous bacteria and fungus. The monster may not be under your bed, but actually in it. So we collected samples from some brave volunteers to find out exactly what bacteria and fungus is growing inside the average pillow. Jason Hunter, Janelle Gross, Andrew Jacobs, and Jennifer Baez offered us their bedroom pillows, some of which are over 10 years old. Dr. Philip Tierno, Director of Clin Clinical Microbiology and Immunology at New York University's Tisch Hospital, performed the tests. Of course, we know him around here as Dr. Germ. Good morning to all of you. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. You know, you're one of our favorite guests here, but I have to admit, when you walk in a room, we kind of get creeped out because we know you're going to gross us out with some findings. Well, hope not. Bedrooms, though, in a home, we're talking indoor air pollution, they can be a huge source of problems. Absolutely. Huge source. One of the dirtiest places in a home in the top three. Let's talk about mattresses and pillows, what they can contain. I'm going to go to a graphic here and just show a partial list of what you can find on the mm -hmm. typical pillow. Human skin cells, bodily secretions and excretions, animal hair and dander, bacteria and fungi, dust mites, perspiration, insect parts, I don't know what parts, parts is parts, food <laughs> particles, cosmetics, <laughs> lotions and oil. So is it the dirtiest room in the house? It's actually not. The kitchen is the dirtiest room. But the bedroom is a close second. All right, let's talk about a couple of facts before we get to our volunteers. And you should keep this in mind, folks, okay? After five years of using a pillow, 10% of the weight of that pillow is made up of dust mites and dust mite feces. And every 10 years, the weight of an average mattress doubles because of the same thing. All right, is that harmful to us? Absolutely. You're inhaling that eight hours per day, every day of your life, somewhere if you don't have the proper protection on your bedding. So if you have allergies, you have asthma, this can really complicate the issue. It can issue. exacerbate both of those, and it can actually even cause, according to some researchers, uh, allergies later on. Brings us to our volunteers. Jason Hunter, he's 19 years old, senior in high school. His synthetic pillow, one to two years old, turned out to be in pretty good condition. Yes, actually it did. Okay, uh, dust mites? Uh, below detection. Well, low detection, Jason. So he well has a done. couple of years left. How about bacteria and fungi? The bacteria were environmental types, not really very significant. Uh, however, he had fun fungus. He had a moderate amount of a fungus called Aspergillus fumigatus and a few Paesilomyces and Aspergillus niger. Were we just looking at the Petri dish of what you grew from Jason's pillow? That's it. There's That's the it fungi. right there? Oh, There's great. The okay, well, Jason, how do you think these results are going to make mom and dad feel? It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but actually, you're one of the better oh, that's examples. Good. That's good. So you feel good. Of this group, you may be the one who's going to go to the head of the class. Oh, that's a good thing. Okay, you're happy? You're going to go home and sleep well tonight? I'll try. All right, good for you. Janelle Gross, 37 years old, single mom, editor for a weekly newspaper. She had a synthetic pillow that she gave us, four to five years old. How'd the dust mite debris count go? She actually had a low count. It started to register as being detectable, okay. but it was still on the low side. Bacteria? Bacteria, she had ordinary environmental types of bacteria. Like what? Uh, like Micrococcus, Rhodococcus. She had a few uh, skin bacteria like Staphylococcus. Fungi? Fungi, she had many Aspergillus niger and a moderate amount of Aspergillus fungi. Where do you get that from? Uh, it's environmental, and dust and uh, fungi settle on the bedding over time. So overall scale of 1 to 10, her pillow turns out to be... Uh, uh, probably about a 4. 4, not bad. Okay, so Janelle, you have a 10-year-old son, is that I right? Do. So you're going to feel comfortable letting him sleep on that pillow? He sometimes does. He does? Yeah. Think you might change out the pillow? Probably so. All right, let's move on. Andrew Jacobs, 38 years old, an attorney, just became a new father. He had a feather pillow, Dr. Tierno. It was 5 to 7 years old. How do you do on the dust mite count? The dust mites also were low. Okay. So you guys are clean. I mean, what does that mean? They're changing the sheets? It doesn't mean you're clean. It's a matter of time. Uh, hopefully, you wash your, your, your bedding once a week minimally. Yes. Is that correct? It's like somebody does. Yeah, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> you don't necessarily. <laughs> How did he do with fungi or fungi? Uh, he, he was loaded with Aspergillus fumigatus. Congratulations. It's not mine. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea where that came from. No. It's not mine. Yeah. I, it's not yours? Well, that's yeah. a whole other segment, isn't it? <laughs> it, it's, it settles over time on the pillow. You also had in feather pillows many bacillus species and feathers uh, on the on the birds feathers you can't really kill off these bacilli so they're notorious for having many bacillus so did he have stuff on his pillow that could make him sick or sicker if he already has allergies yes continued exposure would exacerbate allergies and asthma 
158% increases we've noted in allergies over the last uh, few decades. Right. Your wife sleeps near these pillows, I would imagine, right? Yes. Okay, you think she's going to let you keep this one? I don't think she's going to let me back in the house. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's just public service we provide here at the Today Show. <laughs> Jennifer Baez, 33 years old, advertising account executive from Queens. You gave us one of your favorite pillows, Jennifer. <laughs> it was a synthetic pillow. It was over 10 years old. <laughs> yes, Doctor, how'd we do with dust mites? She gets the prize. <laughs> right. she's, she's the worst. She had very high dust mite counts, and her fungal counts were off the charts. <laughs> off the charts. Back How'd she do bacteria-wise? Bacteria-wise, she had environmental types, as you see um, uh, in the Petri dish, Sarcinia and Staphylococcus. That was growing on your Not pillow <laughs> right there, what you're looking at there. All right, so you suffer from asthma, by yes, the way. Yes, I'm an asthmatic. So you think that complicates her situation? Absolutely, unequivocally. All right. It exacerbates asthma and allergies. Okay, quick tip for you. You say this is the cure. This is the cure. To have an impervious outer covering, not only on your pillows, but also uh, on your mattress. Fungus can't get bedding. through that. Dust mites no, can't get through correct. that. Nothing. And What's in, in your pillow stays there. What's outside stays out. Change your sheets and your pillowcases. Weekly. Weekly. All right. Yes. And, and how long is too long to keep a pillow? Uh, it, when it becomes mechanically dysfunctional, as long as you have it covered, you're protected. But mechanical misfunction is a matter of choice. All right. Dr. Philip Tierno, thanks so much. Thanks to, thanks to the Dirty Dozen as well. It's <laughs> nice to have you guys thank, here. Thank you.